Pesticides are vital to agriculture, but using them safely takes more than just common sense. Chemical hazards aren't straightforward when it comes to cause and effect. With some pesticides, an exposure may cause immediate side effects, while with others, it may take years of chronic exposure to experience the consequences. The good news is there's simple ways to prevent exposures to protect your health, along with making sure you don't bring pesticides home to your family either. Hi, I'm Rachel Hausman. I'm a safety professional with a specialty in chemical safety. And today we're gonna to talk about safely using pesticides. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. If you like our YouTube videos, make sure to check out our video subscription to access over 150 video courses. Check it out at allysafety.com. This video is about pesticides, but pesticide is actually an umbrella term that includes herbicides, insecticides, fungicides, nematicides, rodenticides, larvicides, disinfectants, growth regulators, and more. First, let's talk about how exposure happens, then go through the process of safe pesticide use, decontamination, and storage. There are four basic ways that pesticides can enter the body. They can be absorbed through the skin, inhaled, ingested, or injected. Absorption through the skin is the most common form of pesticide exposure. This occurs when chemicals penetrate the skin and enter the body. The longer a pesticide is on your skin, the more likely it is to be absorbed. That's why you wanna protect your skin with long sleeves, gloves, aprons, Tyvek suits, and any other PPE that's recommended for the pesticide. Respiratory hazards can be absorbed quickly by entering the bloodstream through your lungs, too. Gases and fine particles are the most serious contributors to respiratory exposure. When handling these forms of pesticides, make sure to wear a respirator with the correct cartridges. Additionally, it's important to be clean shaven and conduct a seal check every time you put on a respirator, so you know you're getting a good seal and the air is going through the cartridges rather than through the sides. Accidental ingestion of pesticides is more common than you'd think. Pesticides that have been transferred to food containers are one problem, but eating or drinking after handling pesticides can also lead to accidental exposure. If you need to transfer a product into another container, make sure the container can't be mistaken for a food and label it with the pesticide it contains. Before eating, drinking, or smoking, leave the area where pesticides were applied and wash your face and hands thoroughly with soap and water. While spraying, never put a pesticide contaminated item in your mouth, like a clogged spray line or nozzle. Use safer methods to clear the nozzle. Injection is the least common route of exposure, but is still an important risk you need to be aware of. This can happen when pesticides are on a sharp object and you get cut by that object, or if you have an unprotected cut that pesticides are able to get into. It can even happen through high pressure injection when using a pressurized sprayer. So make sure to cover any open wounds you may have and use protective gloves when handling sharp objects. Also, use caution when working with high pressure sprayers. Those are the main routes of exposure and how to protect yourself. Next, let's look at how to safely mix pesticides. The most dangerous jobs when it comes to pesticide exposures is pouring and mixing. Luckily, you can do this safely with a little bit of caution. Before you begin to mix the chemical, read the label. The saying is the label is the law because we're legally required to apply the pesticide according to the instructions. If you're using a pest control advisor's recommendations, still read the label to understand the main hazards and what PPE you should wear. Find the PPE recommendations on the label and remember, these are the minimums and it is okay to go above and beyond. 
When handling pesticides in California, eye protection is required at all times. The eyes actually have the fastest exposure rate out of any part of the body and are also very sensitive. If pesticides get into your eyes, immediately flush your eyes with clean water for at least 15 minutes. Then follow the product label or the safety data sheet for other first aid measures you might need to take. If you're opening bags, have a knife specifically used to open pesticide bags and don't tear bags open since that can result in spills. Mix the pesticides outdoors where there's plenty of ventilation and make sure to stand upwind of the pesticide to avoid contaminating yourself. Whether you're using the label instructions or your pest control advisor's recommendations, think of it as a prescription for the crop. Follow the mixture instructions exactly. When mixing pesticides, it's not the time to get creative. Mix only enough pesticide for the job because you never want to apply too much and having to dispose of excess pesticides should always be avoided. In California, closed systems have to be used when you mix more than one gallon of liquid category one pesticides per day. Category one pesticides are any that have the word danger on the label. Make sure you have a firm footing, mix slow, steady, and controlled. When removing contaminated material from the container, keep the container below eye level to avoid splashing or spilling the pesticide onto your face and eyes. Once your mixing is done, clear all livestock, pets, and people from the area to be treated and calibrate your equipment before you begin to use it to make sure that the proper amount is coming out. Even if you think you're gonna be in the cab the entire time, bring the right PPE and have an emergency eye wash station available on the equipment. If at any point you splash or spill a pesticide on yourself and you're not wearing a protective suit, stop immediately. Remove contaminated clothing and wash the pesticide off with soap and water. Change out of contaminated clothes and then clean up the spill. Remember, getting pesticide off your skin quickly prevents absorption. Once the product is safely mixed, you're ready to apply. So the tank is mixed and we're ready to start spraying, but before we get started, there are a few details that will really help you to control your pesticide application. Apply pesticides only at the correct time and in the right weather conditions to reduce drift. It's our responsibility to manage the drift and prevent it from causing issues. To do that, check the wind speed before applying the pesticide. One study showed that when wind speed doubled, the drift increased almost 70% downwind from the sprayer. Use an anemometer like this one to check the wind speed. Just make sure you turn off the tractor and the sprayers since the air movement from the equipment will cause inaccurate readings. They're pretty sensitive. Measure the wind speed at the boom for two minutes to make sure it meets the criteria listed on the label and spray areas that are prone to being windy first while the conditions are still good. Remember, go low, go slow, and watch for changing conditions. You may also need to check the wind speed and direction several times throughout spraying because even areas that are fairly close can have different wind patterns and weather conditions. It's actually pretty surprising to see the difference. Periodically scan the equipment for leaking hoses or connections and plugged or worn nozzles and examine the filters to see that it's clean and free of debris. Also, be watchful for passing vehicles, pedestrians, or bikers on nearby roads while you're spraying the perimeters. When traffic is nearby, turn off the sprayer to allow traffic to pass safely. Once the road is clear, continue like before. Repeat this as often as necessary to prevent exposure for those that are passing by. You also want to prevent the pesticide from drifting and contaminating streams, ponds, lakes, or other bodies of water. Don't allow others to enter areas that have been treated with an agricultural chemical until both the re-entry requirement and the chemical manufacturer's recommendations on the label allow re-entry. Once you're done spraying, then it's time to decontaminate.
Once the spraying is done, it's time to decontaminate the equipment. Wear the same PPE that was required for spraying and mixing, and make sure your eyes are protected from splashback. I'm gonna wear an apron too because I like to reduce splashback on myself, regardless of the PPE requirements, but that's just my preference. Research into pesticide-related illnesses found that only 10% of handlers properly maintain or wash spray equipment. To get a good decontamination, clean out the cab, neutralize the tank, and clean the exterior using a pressure washer first and then a scrub brush for cleaning sprayers and tractors. Pressure washers are good for removing dirt and debris from hard to reach places on the equipment. But once the mud and dirt is gone, cleaning with a scrub brush afterwards has been shown to provide the most effective decontamination. Once the equipment is clean, then you've got to decontaminate yourself. You want to clean up before you get into a personal vehicle because pesticides can soak into the upholstery and then contaminate you and other passengers. You also want to make sure you don't bring pesticides home to your family on your clothing. So this step is critical. It starts with changing before you get into your vehicle, leaving work boots outside and separating pesticide contaminated clothing from other clothing. Wear chemical resistant gloves because clothing worn while working with pesticides should be considered contaminated and be cleaned separately from other clothing. It needs to be laundered after each use. This prevents the pesticides from building up and it's easier to remove pesticides daily than to remove accumulated contamination. Pre-soak clothing with similar pesticides together. Use only hot water, set the water level to the highest setting and use a double rinse. After the wash cycle is complete, Clean the washing machine by running a full cycle with hot water and detergent. This prevents the machine from getting contaminated and contaminating other clothing. It's actually best to line dry clothing that was used to apply pesticides. Sunlight will help to break down the residue left and line drying also helps to keep the dryer from becoming contaminated. Then store pesticide handling clothing separate from other clothing and away from pesticides and pesticide containers. When you're finished, make sure to thoroughly wash your face and hands before eating or drinking. Storing pesticides correctly is a critical part of farm safety. And it's also legally required that pesticides are stored in a safe, secure, and well-identified place. Pesticides should be stored in properly labeled containers that can be sealed with the label clearly visible. When you need to transfer pesticides to different containers, never transfer them to old drink bottles or food containers if they could be mistaken for food or drink for either people or animals. This has actually resulted in some pretty tragic events in the past. Instead, Put the pesticides in a non-food container and remove the old label if there is one. Then use a marker to relabel the container with the product name, the signal word, and the recommended PPE. You can also print a copy of the label off the internet to put alongside the container. Never leave a container unlabeled. Pesticides need to be stored with some type of spill containment, also known as secondary containment. Tubs like this one are simple and inexpensive and they prevent spills if there's any leakage. Store pesticides separate from food, seed, or feed in a location away from freezing temperatures or extreme heat. Check regularly to make sure that the containers have no leaks, breaks, tears, or defects. It's actually best to store dry chemicals on shelves above liquid chemicals. That helps to prevent any sort of mixing if there's a leak. And store the heavier containers on lower shelves. All pesticides are to be stored under lock and key at all times. The building, room, or structure where they're stored should be clearly marked with pesticide warning signs. Dispose of any spilled products or leftover pesticides as hazardous waste. For disposal, start by following the instructions listed on the label. Then check to see if your community has a hazardous waste collection day 
or a program for getting rid of unwanted leftover pesticides. Local authorities can also let you know the requirements for pesticide disposal. Never reuse empty pesticide containers for anything other than pesticides. Pesticide residues can actually contaminate the new contents and cause serious harm. Don't try to dispose of pesticides down the sink, toilet, sewer, or street drain. Municipal drinking water and wastewater treatment systems aren't equipped to remove pesticides. Also, if pesticides reach waterways, they can be very harmful. Safe storage and disposal is the last stage of safe pesticide use, but it's also one of the most important. Take time to make sure that your storage and disposal are done right. Safely using pesticides takes attention to detail, but it protects your health, your family's health, and the farm's health in the long run. Take the time to make sure you're using pesticides safely and prevent cross-contamination. As always, thanks for watching, take care, and stay safe. Hi, Rachel from Ally Safety here. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out the Ally Safety Toolbox Talk membership at AllySafety.com. There you'll find an entire library of videos that are created to make safety entertaining. I'll see you there at AllySafety.com.